Hi, I'm Benjamin Bell of This Week with George Stephanopoulos. I'm here today with the nation's Katrina Vanden Heuvel. Welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you. joining us. Thank you. And because we believe all politics is social this week, we're going to put some of the questions that you submitted on Facebook to Katrina. So the first question comes from Susan Kay, and she says, how did you get started in your career? I got started in my career, I was an intern at The Nation, and uh, editor of my high school paper, editor of a college paper, and I wanted to, uh, you know, that was the passion for politics fused with journalism. But it was really the internship in 1980 at The Nation, which has now launched about a thousand journalists, thinkers, writers around, including the head of the Labor Party in Britain, Edward Miliband, former Nation intern. But that's how I got started. And I recommend everyone the Nation internship program. <laughs> <laughs> it works, obviously. Um, so the next question comes from Melinda Jones, and she says, who is the most difficult person you've had to interview and why? Obviously, you've probably interviewed a lot of people. Yeah, this is an unusual. Um, I interviewed uh, Mikhail Gorbachev, the former leader of the Soviet Union, uh, on the 20th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall. And it was difficult not only because it was in Russian, which I speak badly, uh, but because he is someone who is so passionate in his conviction about his ideas and in his belief that he helped change the world uh, and in the role he played in the fall of the Berlin Wall, that he talks in great bursts. Mm -hmm. And to interrupt someone who I believe helped change the history of the world in a better way is a very tough thing to do. So I would say it was Mikhail Gorbachev. Sounds pretty, <laughs> sounds pretty difficult. Um, so the next question is from Coleman DeBoer, and she writes, how, was, how has writing about politics shaped your life? And what don't you favor about it? I love writing about politics. I find often, though, that the parameters of writing about politics are too narrow, that it's too partisan. I love writing about the ideas and the issues that inform our politics. Uh, so what I don't like is where it gets too uh, shrill or hyper-partisan. What I do love is bringing a new idea into the world or lifting up people who are involved in politics who don't get the attention they deserve. So, you know, those are, those are the things I love. And I'm also, first and foremost, to be honest, an editor. So I love finding the younger writers who right. have, you know, a passion about an issue and want to share it with the world, with the nation and the nation. So that's part of my life, too. Right. Absolutely. Okay. And so our, our final viewer question comes from Cliff. And uh, it's more of a statement, actually. He says, Pat Robertson has no respect for women. Of course, this week he said during his show, males have a tendency to wander a little bit. And what you want to do is... Uh, make the home so wonderful that he doesn't want to wander. He was talking to a viewer who had said um, her significant other was cheating on her. Yeah. So what, what's your response to that? You know, putting aside Pat Robertson, who said some pretty outrageous things in his time on this earth, I think the most, one of the most important things about a civilized country is respect for women. And I think we're seeing in too many of our institutions a lack of respect for women. I think, for example, of this week, the epidemic of sexual assault in the military and the need to find a way to restore honor to the men and the women who are serving this country in very difficult ways. I think of those who have talked about legitimate rape. That has no place in our country. So I think Pat Robertson reflects a strand that if we're gonna be a civilized, decent country, has to be kind of outed, revealed, and um, said, no, this is not part of what we are, who we are. Let us honor our sisters, our mothers, our daughters, uh, those in political power, but also the most vulnerable among us who are often women. Okay. And now moving on to our, our lightning round. <laughs> First question, Anthony Weiner, um, mayoral bid. So will you support him if he runs? You're a New Yorker. There are a few very good candidates already running for mayor. I think Anthony Weiner, I'm a believer in redemption and you know second chances, but he needs a few more years in the wilderness in my mind to okay. do that. Okay. Uh, your favorite Republican. Obviously, you're a well-known progressive. Walter Jones. Walter Jones, congressman from North Carolina. He was famous for coining the term freedom fries during the Iraq war because the French were too crazy. But he lives in a district where he went to so many funerals for those who were being killed in Iraq and later Afghanistan that he has joined transpartisan with people who ended the, you know, fought to end the Iraq war and understands that there are better alternatives to conflict than war. So I think Walter Jones is a really interesting Republican on his own terms, but also someone who 
people could look to emulate. Guilty pleasure. <laughs> Guilty pleasure. Watching True Blood and a lot of shows like that sitting with a dirty martini. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that sounds great. Uh, and lastly, your pet peeve. My pet peeve. Oh, people who like, you know, you know I'm not, I don't, I love Twitter. You know I love Twitter. But the, the craziness where people are in, in their cell phones, like it's like sitting, you s go into a restaurant and people are with their cell phones with other people and they're not talking to each other. We gotta find a way to better engage. Otherwise our- Be in the moment. Yeah, be in the moment, be present. Okay, great. All right. um, well, thank you so much thank for you. joining us today. And thank you to everyone who submitted their questions. You can follow the show on Twitter at This Week ABC and on Facebook at facebook.com slash This Week ABC.